Okay, so welcome to this first video in the playlist on cis loop uh, ligand gated ion channels. Okay, and in this first video, what we're going to do is talk about the basics of ion channels, specifically ligand gated ion channels. So, what we're going to look at in this video is we're going to introduce ligand gated ion channels. We're going to see the three main different families of ligand gated ion channels, of which cis loop ligand gated ion channels are uh, an example, basically. Uh, we're then going to look at the different types of cis loop ligand gated ion channels and um, their permeabilities to cations and um, which neurotransmitters they are sensitive to. Okay, uh, so, but to start with, what we're going to do is just have a very basic introduction. So we're going to talk about the basics of a synapse. Okay, so the basics of a synapse then. So, if this is our presynaptic neuron here with its axon terminal here. So this here is its axon and its axon terminal has been blown up massive so that we can see it. And then somewhere up here is the cell body, okay, with the dendrites of the neuron coming off here. Okay, so let's put another dendrite here. And that's going to represent our presynaptic neuron. So this is the neuron, uh, the first neuron, which is going to synapse onto our second neuron. So this is our pre-synaptic neuron, as it's called. Right, so it's going to synapse now with our second neuron, which we'll draw here. So let's let this be a dendritic spine of our postsynaptic neuron now. So this is a little process that comes off a dendrite of the postsynaptic neuron. So we'll just draw the dendritic spine like so. Okay, so this is our postsynaptic neuron. Okay, so what we now want is a mechanism for transmitting an electrical signal from the presynaptic neuron to the postsynaptic post neuron. So we want, basically, activity in the presynaptic neuron to affect activity in the postsynaptic neuron. And this is done, basically, by chemicals, by chemical molecules which travel from the presynaptic neuron to the postsynaptic neuron. And these molecules which, um, which traverse this uh, gap in between them, which by the way is known as the synaptic cleft. So the gap in between the axon terminal, so this is the axon terminal of the presynaptic neuron, and uh, the dendritic spine of the postsynaptic neuron, so this is a dendritic spine here, that's known as a synaptic cleft. Okay, so let me just label synaptic cleft up. So this thing here, this little gap in between the um, axon terminal and the dendritic spine is known as the synaptic cleft. Okay, and the uh, molecules which traverse this distance and come from the axon terminal of the presynaptic neuron to go to uh, the membrane of the postsynaptic neuron here, those are known as neurotransmitter molecules neurotransmitter. Okay, right, so let's just have a brief summary of the process of neurotransmission. So, basically, neurotransmitter molecules are synthesized in the cell body of the neuron here. Okay, so they're synthesized up here. Generally, some synthesis can occur in the axon terminal, but major synthesis is in uh, the cell body. So you're going to make the neurotransmitter. So let's say here is our neurotransmitter here now being made in the um, cell body of the, of the neuron. Okay, it's then going to be packaged into synaptic vesicles. So we'll get a vesicle and we'll pump uh, by secondary active transport the neurotransmitter into this synaptic vesicle. And now what will happen is the synaptic vesicle will be transported down the axon um, into the axon terminal. And then what will happen is it will be docked at the uh, presynaptic membrane of the neuron, ready to be released if an action potential arrives in the axon terminal. So, if an action potential arrives uh, in the axon terminal, it comes down the axon and then arrives in the axon terminal, what will happen is it will cause the fusion of uh, these synaptic vesicles with the presynaptic membrane, releasing the neurotransmitter contents into the synaptic cleft. The neurotransmitter will then uh, 
propagate across the uh, synaptic cleft via simple diffusion, and it will act on receptors on the postsynaptic membrane. And these receptors are most often ligand-gated ion channels. There are other types of receptors it could be, such as a G-protein coupled receptor, but usually they are ligand-gated ion channels. And that's the topic for this video, the different types of ligand-gated ion channels. Okay, so this is some receptor, and we're going to assume that it's a ligand-gated ion channel receptor rather than a G-protein coupled receptor or some other type of receptor such as a receptor tyrosine kinase, or there are even other types of receptors outside of those such as um, steroid receptors, but then I don't know any neurotransmitter that generally acts on steroid receptors. So, um, we're going to assume it's a ligand-gated ion channel receptor ligand gated ion channel. Okay, so I'll just write down in summary the four different types of receptor, the four main families of uh, receptor. So in pharmacology there are at the moment four major families of receptors. So there are the ligand gated ion channels which is what we're going to look at today. Okay, and in the ligand gated ion channels there are three subdivisions within that family. So ligand gated ion channels. Okay, and these are proteins which are in the plasma membrane, which when a ligand op uh, sorry, when a ligand binds to them, it will affect the probability that that ligand that that ion channel that that protein is in the open conformation. So, ligand gated ion channels are proteins in the plasma membrane which will open and conduct ions. So, they're an ion channel when the ligand is present. So, they are an ion channel that is controlled um, by uh, the presence of the ligand. So, they're a ligand gated ion channel. Right. Then there are other types of receptors known as G protein coupled receptors, GPCRs, also known as seven transmembrane receptors, which uh, when the ligand binds, uh, the G protein coupled receptor then interacts with the downstream G protein to cause um, downstream effects. Then there are receptor tyrosine kinases, which are abbreviated as RTKs, which uh, when ligands bind to those, again, it uh, triggers a downstream signaling pathway. And finally, the fourth type of receptors are steroid receptors, which are in, not generally in membranes. Instead, these are generally in the cytoplasm. Because steroid molecules, which generally act on steroid receptors, uh, those, are, um, those are in... Well, those are they lipid soluble, so they can pass through the plasma membrane and get into the cytoplasm. Whereas other molecules that are going to act on these other free type uh, types, um, they generally aren't lipid permeable, so they will not be able to interact with the receptor unless the receptor is on the membrane. Steroid receptors are also uh, called nuclear receptors. Nuclear receptors is a slightly better name to call them than a steroid receptor. And steroid receptors or nuclear receptors exert their action by uh, going to the nucleus, translocating to the nucleus once the ligand is bound to them, and then acting uh, to alter uh, transcription of genes, basically. So they alter gene expression within the cell. So these are the four main families of receptors in all the pharmacology. This summarizes what we know about pharmacology, really. Right, okay, so just to finally finish our uh, picture of neurotransmission, uh, and before we go on to discuss the different uh, subclasses of ligand-gated ion channels, basically we have to terminate the neurotransmitter signal as well. So, uh, once we've released the neurotransmitter, it will go and activate these uh, receptors, which we're imagining are ligand-gated ion channels on the postsynaptic neuron, and what we we don't want that uh, neurotransmitter to now be there forevermore. Uh, we want it to be removed. We want the signal to be uh, transient, basically. And the way that you destroy the signal is either you can reuptake the neurotransmitter into the presynaptic axon terminal. That's very common. So you can reuptake it, and there will be proteins in the presynaptic membrane whose job it is to do that. Okay, so reuptake. In addition, in the brain, there are uh, cells which are not involved in, um, in, well, they're not neurons. So they're not involved in, 
um, what can I say, they're not involved in conducting uh, electrical signals. However, they are involved in assisting the neurons. And these cells, which I don't know where I'm going to be able to draw them, I'll have to draw it down here. Okay. So, this blob of a cell here, which I'll draw in purple. This is what's known as a glial cell. Okay, now you have an absolutely huge number of these glial cells. They're neglected in comparison to the neurons. Everyone studies the neurons. Very few people study the glial cells. So this is a glial cell. Okay, uh, so um, basically, or a glial cell, I think is probably better. Um, basically, these glial cells can also help in the removal of the neurotransmitter. So they will also be uptaking the neurotransmitter from uh, the uh, synaptic cleft, basically. So they'll be helping to terminate the signal. They'll be helping to clear up, if you like. Okay, so we can have reuptake into the axon terminals of the presynaptic ne neuron, as well as reuptake into glial cells. And the glial cells then often transport the neurotransmitter back into uh, the axon terminals of the neurons. Okay, uh, or in some cases, such as acetylcholine, you can actually have degradation of the uh, molecule, the neurotransmitter molecule. So, for instance, there are enzymes known as acetylcholinesterases, which break down acetylcholine, and they're present in the synaptic cleft. Okay, so those will terminate the signal also. So you can have also enzymic uh, destruction. Okay, so where should I put this? So the molecule can be destroyed. Uh, I'll just write it down here. So you can have enzymic breakdown or enzymic uh, enzyme enzymatic would probably be better enzymatic catabolism if we're being posh catabolism means to break things down enzymatic means that it's done by enzymes so to break down the neurotransmitter molecule by enzymes Enzy enzymatic catabolism or enzymatic inactivation if you like Right, okay, so that's a summary of uh, neurotransmission. It's a summary of the different types of receptors. Now what we'll do is we will focus in on ligand-gated ion channels and we'll see the three different families of ligand-gated ion channels that exist. Okay, one of which is the cis-loop ligand-gated ion channels. But we'll see that in the next video.